over an aerial view of the Life Sciences Building, text reads, University of Dundee, School of Life Sciences. Research using worms. Scientists set up a microscope. A feed from a microscope shows multiple small grey worms wriggling on screen. These worms are not your everyday garden worm, but a nematode worm called Cenorhabditis elegans, or C. elegans for short. Even though they are small, only one millimetre in length, they help scientists in Dundee understand the earliest stages of creating new life. We use these worms because they are simple organisms that have the same parts we want to study that more complex organisms, such as humans, have. A scientist uses a tool to scoop up a worm from one agar plate before placing it onto a second agar plate. They are easy to look after and reproduce quickly. Their life cycle is approximately three days. The scientist removes a tray of sample tubes from a freezer. She then removes a frozen sample from one of the tubes. Worms can be frozen for months or years in minus 80 degrees Celsius freezers, which is extremely handy for our research. When we need a specific type of worm, called a strain, we just thaw them. Working at the microscope, the scientist makes an incision into a jelly-like substance on an agar plate. We grow these worms in plastic plates containing some basic nutrients and their food, bacteria, and keep them at their normal living temperature of 15 to 23 degrees Celsius. Let's get back to our research and what we use the worms for. Elsewhere, another scientist studies an agar plate under a microscope. Footage from the microscope shows worms and eggs on the agar plate. We use a specific type of cell, the oocyte, from the worm in our experiments. Oocytes become an egg through a process called gamete formation, which is exactly the process that we study. It is important for all sexually reproducing organisms to make sperm and egg cells, collectively called gametes, which will then fuse to form an embryo. The scientist spreads a clear liquid over a clear slide, then covers it in a casing. He places the slide into a fluorescence microscope and then looks through the eyepiece. Without proper gametes, offspring cannot be produced. The first step to study how an egg cell develops is to collect some oocytes. To do this, we need to open the worm to get to them. We then record the live oocytes we have dissected from worms and observe what happens under a fluorescence microscope. We film the key steps that happen during egg cell formation. The scientist studies images on a computer screen. Footage shows the process of meiosis. All cells contain an instruction manual called DNA. When an egg or sperm is made, we only want it to have half the amount of DNA. This requires a special type of division called meiosis. It means that when offspring is created, half the DNA will come from each parent. Our group want to understand how meiosis works and how each egg cell ends up with the correct amount of DNA. The first scientist works with two microscopes and prepares a slide. Using the second microscope, she injects a worm. Footage from the microscope shows the moment of injection. To help us further, we can get rid of any given protein or make alterations to the worm DNA and see what changes in meiosis. This allows us to identify key factors involved in gamete formation. We do this by injecting worms with a mix of components that can make these changes. This is done using a special microscope equipped with an injection setup. We used this method in our recent work to show that a protein called PP2A is essential for several steps to guarantee that meiosis happens correctly. She transfers matter from the prepared slide to an agar plate. The two scientists work together at a computer and discuss data displayed on the screen. Gaining a better understanding of meiosis will help us understand the things that go wrong during human meiosis and possibly contribute to treatments for infertility and genetic defects in the future. A black letter W appears over text to form the Welcome logo. Text below reads, supported by the Welcome Institutional Strategic Support Fund awarded to University of Dundee. A blue and white crest appears beside blue text to form the University of Dundee logo. 